Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit and this is my world. Uh, but it's not my world as you would normally be seeing it. This is an unusual episode and if you're one of my new subscribers, first of all, thank you very, very much. Every subscriber counts and I'm so happy that you decided to click that red button. Thank you for subscribing. But what you're going to see in this episode isn't my normal material. So I apologise in advance. I don't think I'm going to be very funny in this episode. Um, this is a difficult video for me. Um, and apparently I may be having to do it in a slightly piecemeal fashion. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the whole video in one go, but I will try uh, for the sake of continuity and also just making editor kit's life a little bit easier. Um, so first of all, yes, thank you. Thank you to everyone, all of you kind people who have sent me messages of support. I really appreciate it. Um, Anyone who doesn't know, um, last week, last Tuesday, I lost Frodo, my co-host, my uh, my companion, um, my cat, Frodo. Um, she died last Tuesday. It's a week today. Today's Tuesday. Um, I'm still finding it very difficult. I'm struggling. Um, I shouldn't really be trying to make videos yet. I'm not ready. Um, but at the same time, I have nothing else to do. And I don't just want to fall back into the trap of going to bed and staying there. I need to be active. And this is me being active. So um, this isn't my standard video. Um, if you're new, please don't be put off by this. Please stick around, look at my previous videos and... Um, look forward to my new videos which will be coming soon which will be back to being funny and light-hearted and entertainment because I don't want this to be a heavy channel but um, I am reeling a little bit from a very sudden and unexpected loss um, and I'm finding it quite hard sitting here talking to the camera without Frodo sitting in my eye line she used to love watching me doing this and um, there's a big empty space on my desk where she would usually be sitting right now so i'm going to try and get through this i really apologize i'm sorry um thank you to all my bookie friends who have been sending me messages of support and special thank you to Simon who was there right in my moment of crisis when I needed a friend and he very kindly and bravely volunteered to make the announcement video so that I wouldn't have to. He stepped in and did an amazing job and I'm so grateful Simon thank you. Simon did that 40 times because it was so important to him that he got it right and that is that's real friendship and I'm so so grateful and thank you to everyone who sent me such kind messages I really really appreciate it anyway let's get on with the video shall we um this for me is a very rare haul situation. I don't do hauls because I don't do physical books. I did one haul, which was a bit of a cheat. Um, but um, so this is an anomalous video in every possible sense. Um, here is a haul, um, but it's just it's a one book haul and it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> I do not know why I'm doing this and uh, I question my own wisdom and sanity, but here we go. Okay. 
this this is the tenth good thing about Barney and it's the first time I've seen it since I was four years old because this is the book that my mum chose to use to teach me about grief for reasons that I don't fully understand um she decided that um, her four-year-old needed to have grief introduced into his life. And um, this book fully opened up the grief centre of my brain and kept it open for the rest of my life. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what her thinking was. I'm not sure if I, I... I'm not sure if I'm grateful or if I resent it. I mean, um, the fact that I'm an, an incredibly feeling and sensitive person is a result of my upbringing that's undeniable um the fact that i love and i have so much love in my heart to give that is a good thing i think but the pain i experience as the side effect of that is overwhelming and those of you who know me know that i have bipolar so my emotions are always heightened uh, where someone else might feel sad, I feel suicidally depressed. So obviously my mum didn't know that I had autism or bipolar uh, when she introduced me to this book. But um, the result of this book was catastrophic. I mean, I went into full-blown grief over an imaginary animal when my mum read this book to me. And um, it it tore me to shreds and I never fully recovered and I've never looked at this book, touched this book or, or thought about this book since um, until losing Frodo. And losing Frodo whilst being a new booktuber kind of made a connection in my brain with this being an appropriate book for me to discuss seven days after losing my baby girl. So... This is the 10th good thing about Barney. As I recall, um, it's about a little boy whose cat dies and um, his process of, um, of coming to terms with that grief um, through thinking of or trying to think of 10 good things about his beloved cat and he manages to get to number nine and then he struggles with the 10th one. That's my recollection of it. I haven't read this since I was four years old and only once then. So I'm going to have a look at it. It's got beautiful illustrations. <laughs> see things like that. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Just simple little things. That is such a familiar view and so triggering. My cat Barney died last Friday. I was very sad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to be able to read the rest of this. <laughs> I've got it though now. This is um this is I suppose my version of coming full circle. Um this book opened up uh, my awareness of grief and my ability to grieve and uh and here I am looking at now. See look. It has the this imagery, these dead cats, dead cats sitting on clouds. It has a similar effect that um, Watership Down, if you've seen, or if, if you've read the book, or if you've seen the animation, um, and there's the rabbit leaping across the sky. That destroys me. That's a trigger for me. Anything involving dead animals is a trigger for me because of this um, thing that I have with animals. Um, I keep doing it to myself. I've never not had a cat in my life. I can't be without a cat, but this is the result. Pain, lots and lots of pain. So so anyway, um, this I do not believe this to be a bad book. Um, it's certainly very beautifully done it's beautifully written it's beautifully illustrated um it's very simple very simple illustrations um it's designed to help children cope with grief i think the mistake that 
my mum made was um, trying to preempt any grief. I had a cat at that time, my first cat, my first love, um, and he lived to 17 and a half years old. And I was a teenager, a late teenager, when he eventually died. Um, but my mum had been preparing me for that since I was four years old, which I think was premature. Just a little bit premature. I didn't. I didn't need to have that uh, just yet. Um, but that's not the fault of the book. That was, I think, a mistake that my mum made. Books like this are important for people of all ages because grief can happen at any time, at any stage in your life, and there ought to be something there to help you through that. Personally, this book didn't help me. I think it made it worse, but that's because of my own issues and because I think I was too young for this book. And it wasn't relevant yet because I hadn't yet experienced any death in my life. Um, so that's a strange, that's a strange choice that my mum made. I don't understand why she did that. Um, but, uh, but by and large, I think that there are going to be children out there who lose their cat or their rabbit or their dog. And when that happens, I think this is a really good book for them, actually, because looking through it again now, it's it's so simple and so sweet and gentle. And um, and it offers one one way uh, to cope with grief. It's not my way. I don't need to make a list of 10 good things about Frodo because there are a million good things about Frodo and I don't need to list them. I know them all in my heart. And um, honestly, the only thing that helps with my grief is just time. It's a cliche, but... Um, yeah, the cliche of time heals all wounds. Um, the wound never heals, but a scab does grow. Um, you do get used to it. Um, I'm still grieving over Frodo's sister, Bilbo. Most of you probably don't even know about Bilbo, but I got the two of them as a pair. Originally, I thought I was, I was having two boys, which is why they were called Bilbo and Frodo brothers who I got when they were very young too young to be properly weaned but they were rescue kittens so I had them from tiny and um, Bilbo died suddenly and unexpectedly about three years ago she was three years old and that broke my heart um, but I still had Frodo and now Frodo has died in exactly the same way. So obviously there must have been some sort of congenital heart condition that they both had. They both died very, very quickly. Um, so I think what I'm going to do... This is not a proper review video. I really apologise for that. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, take some more time to sort my head out. Hopefully not too much time. Um, I've got this one out of the way now. This is me getting back on the horse and making a video without Frodo sitting there with me. Um, and I think really the only appropriate way to end this is with a little montage. So um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you stick around please don't abandon me because I will be coming back and making proper videos soon. Uh, but in the meantime, here is a montage of Bilbo and Frodo in their happy life together.